What's up, my beautiful, sexy people? Welcome back to another thrilling comic book review video where I say words and you, the magically delicious, listen. It is I, your crazy Nicolas Cage, your steward of Gundor, your genius, billionaire playboy, basic YouTuber philanthropist, Supercliff. And would you kindly hit that like and subscribe button for every little bit of helps in this majestic YouTube world. And oh my God, hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I am hyped because we are covering Beta Ray Bill, issue number one, a five issue miniseries that is written and drawn by the talented Daniel Warren Johnson with Mike Spicer on the book's colors. And away we go, as our story takes us back in time to give us a reminder and to provide anyone who's a new reader the origins of Beta Ray Bill. And here on Bill's home planet of Corbin, we see a couple of Corbinites looking through a large telescope and what they see across the vastness of space is fire. And that this fire is heading directly towards their planet. Now in truth, what they appear to be seeing is a horde of fire demons who were sent by the villain Surtur to basically destroy the planet of Corbin. And so with these two dudes being extremely terrified, they end up knocking on someone's door, to which we see a Corbinite woman answer. Now this is immediately revealed to be Bill's mother, as she's then told by the two Corbinites that, hey, um, your son's been chosen. Congratulations. <laughs> now, essentially what this all means is that with the incoming arrival of the fire demons, the Corbinites decided to choose a champion whom would protect and lead the survivors to their new home. So with their fleet assembled and their, and their ships programmed to follow Bill's ship, Scuttlebutt, which by the way is an awesome name, the Corbinites aboard are then placed into status while their champion, being Beta Ray Bill, is charged with protecting the fleet and the sleeping Corbinites from the attacking demons. Now, as a way to ensure that Bill doesn't just get his ass kicked whilst protecting everyone, the Corbinites transform Bill into a cybernetic being resembling a fierce horse creature. Now, in case anyone doesn't know, check it, because back during Walt Simonson's Thor run during the 80s, Beta Ray Bill eventually meets Thor. And the reason really as to why Beta Ray Bill is known and is considered to be a fan favorite amongst Marvel readers is because that despite what the MCU has done by showing Vision and Cap being worthy to wield Mjolnir, it was actually Beta Ray Bill who was the first person in comics to wield Thor's hammer, which was a big deal in comics at that time. Therefore, following that reveal, Odin was extremely impressed with Bill and the amount of courage and honor he showed. And so as a result, since Mjolnir was, Th was Thor's hammer, Odin granted Bill the hammer known as Stormbreaker. And that's basically how we get to both Bill and Thor being hammer bros. Now, with this miniseries being a sort of spinoff from Donny Cates' Thor, then you might know that during the Black Winter arc, Bill and Thor had a disagreement, which resulted in the two fighting, which then resulted in the destruction of Stormbreaker. Now, luckily both Thor and Bill are still cool, but with the destruction of Stormbreaker, Bill's been struggling with a lot of things. His new position as Asgard's war general, him and Sif starting a relationship, and on top of that, while Thor is away, dealing with Null on Earth, Bill is left with defending Asgard from Null's symbiote forces. And just to make things a bit clear, this story takes place after both King and Black and the Prey story that's happening in, in the Thor book. But don't worry about spoilers because this book does a fantastic job in not spoiling either story. So just an FYI so that everyone here is on the same page. Cool. All right. Anyways, here we see Beta Ray Bill suiting up for battle. And with that, Bill provides the Asgardian warriors with a war speech. You know, trying to get everyone hyped up for battle. However, whilst Bill is getting Asgard hyped, our defenders are then suddenly met with the arrival of a symbiote-controlled Fin Fang Foom. And boy oh boy is he bringing utter destruction as the villainous dragon barges his way through Asgard, swinging, attacking, and clawing any who are within range. Now, while all this chaos is ensuing, Scuttlebutt, Bill's ship, who's hovering above the battlefield, begins unleashing a barrage of cannon fire against Fin Fang Foom. And so with this assist, Beta Ray Bill proceeds to attempt a killing move against the monster. However, Fin Fang Foom is able to counter Bill by grabbing our hero by the face, basically tossing him aside. And once that happens, Scuttlebutt is then punched in the face by the dragon. And as a result, Bill's friend of a ship is knocked into the empty helmet of Galactus, taking Scuttlebutt out of the fight. And it's at this point where everything seems to be lost, as we can see Fin Fang Foom making his way over to a wounded Lady Sith. But the fight's not over, because if one thing's for sure, you don't mess with a hero's lover. Y you just don't do that. So, <laughs> so as we can see here, Bill is tugging back the dragon's tail with all his might. 
And here, Bill declares to the dragon that if it wants Asgard, he'll have to go through Bill. But unfortunately, this heroic display is not quite intimidating to our villain. Because without a moment's passing, Fin Fang Foom straight up punches Bill square in the face. And with a now down, out of commission Beta Ray Bill, Fin Fang Foom basically teabags Bill as he proclaims on how much he loves the feast on Horsemead. But fear not, people, because Fin Fang Foom is then suddenly struck by a bolt of lightning and is thereby taken out of the fight as Thor the God of Thunder makes his arrival. And immediately following Fin Fang Foom's defeat, everyone from Volstag to every soldier in Asgard's army begins to cheer and proclaim victory. But hold on a second here, folks, because this is where things get pretty messed up. Because although it's great that Thor was able to save Asgard and its people, Bill, who by all accounts was present for the entire time, like he led Asgard's defenses and due to his leadership, he was able to hold back Fin Fang Foom from destroying Asgard, which in turn provided Thor enough time to return and finish the fight. Basically, Bill did all the hard work and, and in this instance, Bill was Aragorn during the Battle of Helm's Deep and Thor was Gandalf. However, unlike Aragorn who was praised and worshipped, Bill is instead completely forgotten about, and Thor, who spent maybe 10 seconds in the fight, is hailed and praised as the hero. And I'm going to make a sports reference here, so just bear with me. Thor is hailed as Asgard's goat. He's essentially Tom Brady. Later, as everyone is celebrating Asgard's victory, and while Thor is being admired by all the single ladies for his bravery, we see Bill sulking away in the corner, and clearly Bill doesn't feel like talking to anyone at this point. Bill even pushes Pip the troll aside. He's just that much in a bad mood. Now, whilst the party continues, Sif shows up and begins making the moves on Bill. And yeah, <laughs> Bill's about to get laid, and you know what? Good for him. However, it ends up blowing up in his face because as these two lovebirds are about to do the deed, Sif asks the question as to how all this works. Like, no, she's not asking Bill, how do you have sex? I mean, come on, guys. Her and Thor used to bang all the time. Pretty sure she knows sex. But essentially what she's asking here is, how, how does one have sex with Beta Ray Bill? <laughs> Basically, how does Bill turn back to his humanoid form? And this is where it just gets sad, because in order for Bill to switch back and forth from jacked up Bill to regular sized Bill, he would do so by using Stormbreaker. But since Stormbreaker is destroyed, Bill can't perform. <laughs> so he just leaves. <laughs> Afterwards, outside, Beta Ray Bill tells Scuttlebutt to begin prepping the engines, for the two of them are leaving. And as Scuttlebutt begins to do so, Thor pulls up and wonders as to why Bill's leaving Asgard. And this is when Bill basically just kind of lets it out. And according to Bill, he can't he can't stay in Asgard because whenever he's to revel in his victories, Thor is there to take all the glory. Bill also mentions to Thor that he's always felt second place to him. Plus, when Thor destroyed Stormbreaker, Thor never considered the fact that when he destroyed Bill's hammer, he destroyed the greatest gift Odin had bestowed to Bill. Overall, without Stormbreaker, Bill feels like a loser. Therefore, Bill declares that he's leaving Asgard in order to go find Odin so that he can make Bill a new hammer, like before. Essentially, to quote Bill here, he's going to make himself beautiful again. But before this issue concludes, I just want to mention this part, so check it. Now, as Bill is walking through the hallways within Scuttlebutt, the movie Hook, which stars Robin Williams, R.I.P., is playing in the background, and the scene that is playing features the film's character, Rufio, which is a cool thing to add in the story and it definitely shares a theme that's similar to Bill's story. And it's with that where we see Bill sitting in the captain's chair broken as he's wondering as to what he's going to do next. And that was Beta Ray Bill, issue number one. And hot diggity dog, what an awesome first issue this was. Hot damn, is Daniel Warren Johnson extremely talented. Okay, so let's get right into it. Starting with the obvious. Holy Christ, is the art freaking fantastic. God, it's so good. Across the board, I'm giving it every single A plus I can find. Good job. Now, when it comes to the story itself, it's really good. Seeing just how Beta Ray Bill feels when compared to Thor is quite heartbreaking. And it's definitely a feeling we've all felt before whenever someone we know, whether it be friend, family, or whoever, is doing better than we are. And that from whoever we're comparing ourselves to, their ability to, to perform said task just comes naturally. Whereas for us, we may have to work harder to achieve said task. So yeah, it's just a well-grounded dilemma that Bill's going through. And it's definitely relatable, which I appreciate because, you know, it's always a plus to have that in your stories. This issue also does a fantastic job at being a tie-in for, for the King in Black event while still keeping its identity intact. Basically, it's a tie-in, but at the same time, it's not. Because in its core, it's still a Beta Ray Bill story. The book just borrows the symbiote Fin Fang Foom scene to showcase how Beta Ray Bill feels and is viewed whenever fighting besides Thor. 
And yeah, Johnson's able to use King and Black to propel the Beta Ray Bill story, which was really cool to see. And I wonder, coming from an optimistic point of view, can this form of storytelling help influence future tie-ins? Attention all comic writers, take notes, please. Also, Beta Ray Bill is a fan of the movie Hook. Just saying. Overall, Beta Ray Bill, issue number one, was a fantastic start to this five-issue miniseries, as Daniel Warren Johnson is able to nail that level of intrigue, which makes me want to see more of Bill's journey of self-discovery, not to mention the possible reconstruction of Stormbreaker. So yeah, more hammers the better. Beta Ray Bill, issue number one, gets a delicious 9.5 out of 10. Giggity goo.